This is the last lesson in the unit, um, and it's on interpreting graphs. So this is section 5.6. It, uh, it's my favorite lesson of all. It's kind of fun. We're going to read graphs, and we're going to try and figure out what it is they're saying to us, just in a general sense. So this first graph, um, the guy in the bathtub, the graph shows the height of the water in the bathtub over time. Uh, it kind of the graph, as we explore it a little bit further, you'll see why I think it's kind of funny. Key points uh, where the graph changes are labeled. So there are certain sections. So when you're doing questions like this and trying to explain what we see in the graph, please take notice of how many sections there actually are. Uh, I would like it if you then spoke about that, whoops, spoke about this section of the graph, that section of the graph, this section of the graph, that section, this section. I want to know something, whoops, that one. I want to know something about all the different little pieces that you see on the graph. Okay, so let's just, we're going to just talk about a story for this graph. Um, it says, if we think about the possible reasons for the changes at the key points, we can describe what the graph represents. Okay, so these questions, I don't know how creative you want to be, but we're going to try and describe what this graph is saying about this guy in the tub. All right? So first, we imagine, imagine taking a bath, <laughs> and you go up to the bathroom and you're going to take a bath. Uh, you might start to think what that section of the graph might represent. This is based on height of the water and time that passes. Okay? So time passes here, and the height of the water gets goes up this section from A to B. A, B. Uh, what that is showing us is that the, the water is increasing in the tub. So you might imagine this is just this guy's in the bathroom, and he's turned the tub on. So he maybe hasn't gotten in yet, but he's filling the tub. Okay? Filling the bath. There are no numbers on this graph for a change, which is kind of different, but it's just to get a general idea of what these line segments are telling us. The second part of the graph from B to C, so right in there, B to C. Um, okay, so that's a horizontal line, it's flat. So that means that time is passing. Time is going by, but the water doesn't change. So I guess to me, this means that at that point, that could represent that he's turned the water off. Okay? Turn the water off, but he hasn't gotten in yet. Okay, so that might lead us to the next sex section here. The next section from C to D is a vertical line, which is why this makes me kind of laugh. Um, this guy must be really fast at jumping into the into the tub because what this is suggesting, since it doesn't go to the right at all, this section right here is suggesting that time does not pass, but the height of the water increases. Um, so a lot of students will say, well, this is the point where he gets in the tub, which is true, but doesn't it take you a little bit of time to get in the tub? Like, I don't think I could get in the tub in zero seconds myself. So we, we're just going with this graph. This is okay, but here's this guy. He jumps in the tub, obviously, right? From C to D, he jumps really fast. In actually zero seconds, he jumps in the tub, okay? Jumps, definitely. To me, I would have liked this graph a little better if that had just a little tiny slant to it to show that he is not a superhero and that time had to pass for him to get in. Okay? Um, the next section here from C to D, or sorry, from D to E is flat again. So if we talk about that section, D, E, I would say, and again, this graph makes me laugh, um, what do you think? This is possibly the point where he's just soaking in the tub. All right, he's having a bath. So this is where he's actually having a bath. A bath. The water is obviously off. There's no more water filling the tub. 
But again, if this was a really accurate graph, don't you think that he'd move and the water might just kind of go up and down a little bit, right? Like, what the heck? Okay, so let's just pretend this guy jumps in the bath in the speed of zero seconds, and then he doesn't move at all. So he's tired. He's sleeping. And from D to E, um, nothing changes, okay? He's having his bath. He's soaking in the tub. From E to F, let's look at that section here. E to F. It's, it's a pretty steep line. It's not as steep as over here when the bathtub was filling. But I might suggest here that he's just pulled the plug, okay? He took the plug out of the, the drain and the water is starting to drain. So E, F, pulled out the drain, pulled out the plug, and water is draining. And draining, draining. Um, a lot of students get really fancy with this sort of stuff, and they tell me lots of stories about what he's doing and, you know, what he's reading in the tub, and they kind of expand on that and make the stories funny, and that's great if, you, uh, if you're sort of creative like that. All I really want you to know is that each section, I want you to talk about each section of the graph. Uh, now, from F to G, again, our superhero returns, and he really quickly jumps out of the tub, okay, because the water drops really quickly in zero seconds, so the only thing I can come up with is that he has jumped out of the tub at that point. So E to F, F, G. He jumps, again, really quickly, jumps out, okay, which would kind of account for the really quick drop in the in the height of the water and then I guess he's off getting on his jammies and the rest here um, the rest of the graph is just the rest of the water draining out of the tub from G to H okay rest of water drains all right drains so it does tell us quite a bit um, about a graph when you look at each segment like that. Uh, and again, you could tell a story, you could kind of describe what's going on in this situation. Uh, just another quick one here. Um, this is George. Uh, George is having a walk to school. So you always want to look for a title if there is one. This describes George's walk to school, the distance from home and the time. So you might notice his distance from home is in meters and his time is in minutes, all right? So again, if we were going to just discuss each section, what I would expect from you is for you to look at the first section from A to B. And from A to B, I would like to know that he's walked 300 meters in three minutes, okay? I need that kind of detail in your answer. So this is where George walks 300, and I know it's meters because of the what it's, what's written on the graph, 300 meters in three minutes, okay? And then the next part from B to C, all right, how far does he walk there? Like that's a little harder to tell. From 500, he started at 300. Okay, so he's going to walk from B to C. George walks. I think he's going slower or faster right here than he started out. If it's not as steep, he's going to be slower. So he slowed down. So he walks slower. Um, so he might have started off like with a jog and now he's just walking. Uh, he walks a little bit slower here. He goes from 3 to 5, so 200 meters. In, and how long does that take him? So we have to trace down. He started at 3 minutes, and he ended at 7. So th the difference between 3 minutes up to 7 minutes in there is 4 minutes. So it took him 4 minutes to go 200 meters.
Okay, so obviously he's slower. 300 meters off the start just took three minutes. Now he, he went 200 meters and it took him even longer. So he's definitely slowed down. Then let's look at the next section from C to D. So from C to D, it's flat, which means his meters don't, didn't change. Vertically up and down this way, nothing happened. So time passed, time increased, but his distance didn't. So he's taking a break, right? C to D, he stopped, he's talking to somebody, he has to tie his shoe, there's some reason. That took a total of two minutes, okay? So he stops for two minutes. And then he continues on to school. Um, this is all about distance, by the way, distance and time. Uh, he continues on to school. He goes, he's starting off at 500 again, and he's going up to 700. So 500 to 700, that's a distance of 200 meters. And, and how long does that take? Trace down. That was five, six, seven, nine. Okay, nine minutes up to, here, trace down again. This would be 10, 11, 12, 13. So from 9 up to 13. Okay, that took 4 minutes. 200 meters in 4 minutes. Uh, and then he arrives at school. Okay, so the 200 meters in 4 minutes, he's back to the same pace as he is. He's still walking slowly. We can kind of comment on his speed here. Please notice that this, this graph, I just want to tell you about the biggest mistake people make. Um, they look back at this graph and they see what it looks like. And I get a lot of students talking about hills. I just want to mention that. Uh, this is not a hill, okay? That is not George walking up a hill. It looks like it's going up. So a lot of people say, oh, George is walking up a hill because it's going up. This is just a graph about distance from home and time. And as he gets further away from home, it goes up because he's further away from home. Um, I get a lot of answers. Oh, George is going up a hill, and then the hill's not as steep, and then the hill's really steep. In no, nowhere in this graph, anywhere in any of the labels and any of the information, does it talk about elevation. Okay? If this was elevation up the, up the vertical axis, that might tell us that he's going up a hill. But if it doesn't say elevation, uh, it has nothing to do with how high he is above sea level, okay? This is just distance from home. He's getting further away from home. It talks about his speed because meters per minute could be a speed. Okay, so that's the kind of answer I'd be looking for. Looking at each section, you are going to receive an assignment on this, um, which will be marked. And uh, same thing, you can be creative if you like, but it just kind of tells stories about the graph.